Hey guys, Grumpy here with the first part in a multi-part series to ship design. In this video, we're going to talk about CQC ships, so close quarters combat ships, what they are and the roles they serve on the battlefields. Then we'll talk about the shipbuilding principles I have in mind when I'm designing these types of ships. And then we'll demonstrate the ships to uh, show off their capabilities. So what are CQC ships? These are ships that love to be in the fight. Um, they love to be near the enemy. They are very fast and maneuverable ships, so they can create flanking opportunities um, for themselves or for the rest of your fleet. And then typically I like to restrict these to fighters and destroyers. Um, you can scale these up when we go into the principles to larger ships, um, but I definitely recommend you stay to the more maneuverable side of cruisers if you're going to go that route. Things like the Aurora, things like the Eradicator P, um, cruisers that can very easily move around the battlefield. So let's talk about the roles that the, the ships serve. So typically it's three roles. It's going to be DPS. So those are things like the Brawler, the Hyperion, the Tempest. Uh, their role is to eliminate high value targets on the battlefield. Things like capital ships and cruisers. Um, in a one-on-one -on -one scenario with the AI, they can typically kill most cruisers. Um, in the player's hands, you can almost always kill a cruiser. And then also in the player's hands, you can sometimes kill a capital ship. Um, it just depends. It comes down to skill and um, just quick reaction to what the capital ship is doing. Then uh, next up, you have your tanks. So things like your monitor. These are traditional tanks. So their role is to just get beat up by something like a capital ship and walk away without a scratch. Um, they do a very good job of tying up enemy capital ships or you can send them into a group of ships and they can shrug off a lot of the damage then you have things like your uh, shades which you covered in the phase guide and the tempest um, they can also tank but not directly they're more so for harassing which we demonstrated uh, earlier but they are also considered tanks in my mind for what they can do and then finally you have supports so these are things like your Tempest, or sorry, things like your Omen and your Vigilance. The Omen providing quality of life for the rest of your ships, and the Vigilance providing additional um, firepower. So let's talk about DPS ships. Uh, things that make a DPS ship good are that they have access to medium or large weapon slots. They have excellent flux management, and they have a special ability that gives them a edge in combat. So if we look at the LP Brawler, um, I think it's a shining example of all three of those principles. It has medium slots in the form of ballistics. It has built-in safety overrides, which is going to double the efficiency of your capacitors and your vents. And then it has accelerated ammo feeder, which is going to increase the rate of fire of all your ballistic weapons. Uh, so let's go ahead and design a ship. So in the medium ballistic hardpoints, I want to um, use a weapon system that has the highest DPS, that being the assault chain gun. And the reason we know it's the highest DPS weapon is because we can look at the data sheet as 500 damage per second. And compared to every other weapon system in this category, um, the assault chain gun just comes out miles ahead. Next up, we have the small universal hard points. So because the assault chain gun does high explosive damage, I want to pair this with its opposite type, so kinetic. So we can go ahead and use something like the light needler here. And then we can add in our vents. So I'm going to add in 10. Um, I have access to uh, more because of flux regulation, which adds plus 5 maximum. But I'm just going to do 10 just in case you don't have that perk. Um, and then we can add capacitors. And then that would be how we design the ship. Now, this isn't a good design. The main reason is that the weapon flux per second is just too high at 1048 far exceeds our flux dissipation um, even though our assault chain gun is flux efficient at 0 0.8 and our light needler is flux efficient at 0 0.8 when you combine all these systems together it makes our ship uh, flux inefficient so you have to balance that um, so how would we fix this how do we balance this well we need to remove these light needlers and that's going to bring our weapon flux down to 799 which is a lot closer to our 750 flux dissipation 
but now that introduces another problem in that we're just doing high explosive damage and we don't have any kinetic damage. So the way we solve that problem is in our small universals, we add a missile system. Specifically, we add the Sabo missiles. So if we go ahead and add in the Sabo missiles, they do kinetic damage and they don't cost any flux. So our weapon flux is still at 799 and our flux dissipation is 750. But now we have weapon systems that work in tandem. Um, because we're using weapon system or because we're using missiles, uh, we can see if we can improve these missiles and we can add something like expanded missile racks. So what expanded missile racks is going to do is it's going to double the amount of sabos that we get, like we covered in the missile guide. So instead of three, we're going to get six and you get six per. So you have 12 total. And I think that's it. This would be how I would design the LP brawler. Um, ballistic weapons taking advantage of the accelerated ammo feeder. These do the most damage. They're paired with a Sabo, which does kinetic, so the opposite damage type. Then we have expanded missile racks to um, double the amount of Sabos that we get. Finally, the last thing we need to do is cover the weapon groups. So this is the weapon group tab. Um, it can be a little intimidating. What most people do is they hit auto sign and go. Um, I would advise just playing around in here. It's not too scary once you understand all the different parts of it. Um, so let's break it down. Here we have the weapon section. So this covers all the weapon systems that you have on your ship. So we have two assault chain guns, two sabos. That checks out. Two assault chain guns, two sabos. Next up, you have hard points. Um, so it'll either say hard point or it'll say turret. If it's a hard point, then that means that it's fixed. So it can only fire in one direction. Uh, if it's a turret, that means it can rotate uh, along this um, yeah, uh, axis, I guess. It can rotate um, along this, this portion. And then finally, uh, you have the circle here. And the dark region is the ineffective area. And then the bright region is the effective area. So these being hard points, they can only fire forward. You see that visually indicated here um, in this like narrow cone. Uh, on something like the phase lance, you have a much wider arc. Uh, after that, you have your channel section. So these channels 1 through 7 correlate with the 1 through 7 on your keyboard. So if you wanted to, you could do something like this where you put each weapon system on its own uh, channel. But that would be ineffective. I like to group weapon systems by if they're facing in the same direction or if I want them to fire on the same target. So I want my assault chain guns, they face in the same direction to target the same enemy. Um, they're hard points, so they can't really move in different directions. But if they were turrets, like on the Tempest, I want them to focus on the same enemy. And they face in the same direction, so I want them on the same channel. Same with the Sabos. Um, same channel, same enemy. Missiles are a little different in that they'll target whatever is closest to you. So sometimes it can be the same enemy, but sometimes if you fire two missiles, they'll go off in different directions, unless you have that enemy targeted specifically, which we'll go over in the demonstration. Next up, you have auto fire starts enabled. So uh, what auto fire is, is um, it fires your weapons if you're on a different channel. So if we're on the Sabo channel, if we press two, then our assault chain guns will still fire if there's a weapon, if there's an enemy in range. Whereas if we didn't have this disabled, our assault chain guns wouldn't fire. Now this is more, for, more important for the player. The AI will flick on and off auto fire as it sees fit. So you can set this to whatever you want. Um, the AI will modify it in combat on the fly. So you don't have to worry about it for the AI. But for the player, I'd recommend your main armament to be on auto fire at all times. So that way you can mess around with your different weapon systems and still be doing consistent damage. And then finally, we have to go over the fire modes, which we covered in the missile guide, but we have linked in alternating. Um, alternating is gonna fire them uh, and sequentially, linked is gonna fire them in tandem. So I want my sabos to be linked because I want them to do the maximum amount of damage possible. And I want my assault chain guns to be linked because if they are alternated fire, then we would only fire one, which would be pointless. Cool. Um, so all that's set, that's ready to go. That would be how I would design the ship, right? Start with the DPS and then solve the problems as they come up. 
So DPS, um, we needed to solve flux. The way we solved flux was using missiles. The way we improved our missiles was using expanded missile racks. And now we have a complete ship. So if we run a simulation with all those systems running in tandem, we can use our ship to effectively kill things that are larger than it. So we're in a frigate. The Falcon is considered a cruiser. And we're going to have no problem dicing this Falcon up. So it starts with putting your shields up so you can mitigate these beam weapons that it has. Um, and then once it's in range, you want to target it using the R key. Then you want to hit uh, 2 to switch over to your sabos, which is going to bring your sabos up. And you'll notice our assault chain guns aren't firing. That's because they're outside of the range. Uh, and then you want to close the distance and use your sabos to overload the shield, and then your assault chain guns will carry the rest of your damage. Alright, so I naturally switched over to my assault chain guns, but even if I stayed in my sabos, um, our assault chain gun was still fire and I can demonstrate that. Even though we're in channel 2, because the assault chain guns are on auto fire, they're firing. You can also enable and disable auto fire if you hit hold down control and hit the um, the appropriate key. If it's blinking, that means you're on that channel and auto fire is enabled. So we're on channel two and also we have um, auto fire enabled so we can disable that. We're gonna switch over to channel one, which is the assault chain gun and we're gonna press F. And that sound that you heard was our special ability being activated and now we're just gonna lay into this Falcon. Making sure to shoot that gray area as it rotates, I rotate. And boom. So that Falcon stood no chance. Um, our Sabos punched through the shield and then our assault chain gun stripped away the armor and just did a massive amount of damage to its hull. So that would be an effective ship design. Um, as you build your ships, um, not just CQC ships like we're going to cover today, but as you build your ships, you want to pair different weapon systems together. So high explosive with kinetic, um, energy with kinetic. Like you want to make sure that your weapon systems are hitting the right parts of an enemy ship at the right time. So next up we have the Hyperion. Um, the Hyperion uses safety overrides as well. Or well, let's start with the, the weapon systems. The Hyperion has three weapon systems, uh, three mediums. Two being energy, one being a universal. So that's um, the first check. The second check is it has safety overrides, which is going to improve its uh, capacity and vent, its flux management. Then it has a special ability called phase teleporter. And what this says is it teleports you to your desired location. Um, similar to like a wolf. It teleports you to your desired location and then um, it requires zero flux boost to use. So if we go ahead and get rid of safety overrides and we run a simulation. Uh, what Zero Flux Engine Boost is, is it's the engine boost. It's a plus 50 to top speed that you get when you're not using any flux. So me flying around right now, we're moving at 194. The minute I put my shields up and start generating flux, we lose our Zero Flux Boost. And if I press the F key, you'll hear that misfire. That's the sound of us trying to use our phase teleporter, but not being eligible to, because if you look over here, it says requires zero flux boost. That's in orange. That means this is a condition that we don't satisfy. The same with hull mods. But if we go ahead and remove our shields, we get our zero flux engine boost back. And now if I press F, we teleport to wherever our cursor is. So what phase teleporter is normally for is it's for closing the distance to get to a battle or to get away from a fight um, that's usually what it's for but if we go ahead and add safety overrides the second part of safety overrides what it does is it add, it allows you to get that zero flux boost regardless of whatever you're doing so you always have the zero flux boost whether your shields are up whether they're down whether you're firing you're always going to have that flux boost. And what that means is, um, we can actually demonstrate that. If we go ahead and spawn in something like a... Uh, that was a little closer than I expected. 
If we go ahead and summon in something like an eagle here. We can do something like this. Where we get behind the eagle. And uh, we just have open access to its forts. So we can go ahead and start firing here. It's going to try to turn away from us. Because it has maneuvering jets. But all we have to do is wait it out. Teleport again. And now we're right back behind it. And if we're lucky, we can get a flame out. And we just keep aiming for its engines. Cool. So we got a flame out. And now it's just a matter of shooting it down. Cool. So that was using phase teleporting combat. It really allows you to get into an opponent's um, soft spots, like the unguarded parts of the shields, so that you can maximize the damage that you do back there. Um, so that's ship design, right? Like I wanted heavy blasters because they do a lot of damage. You can use antimatter blasters, which also do a ton of damage, but um, I just found heavy blasters to be a little more consistent in their damage per second. I don't need Hyperions to do a ton of damage. They're tanky ships. They have a lot of capacity, um, so they can, you know, be retaliated and still uh, have enough flux to play with that they can. Um, they can kill a target, right, while still taking fire from other ships. And then if you look over here at our flux dissipation, 1400 flux compared to our weapon flux per second, 1440. Uh, that's fairly balanced. So this would be a good ship design. Um, you can add a medium universal here, like you can add a missile system. The problem is it's going to cost you ordnance, and at that point you'd have to sacrifice uh, some capacity in order to support a missile and between the two heavy blasters you're really already doing enough damage to kill most things um, next up we have something like the tempest so this is a design that uses phase lances instead of um, you know like blasters or like an assault chain gun these fire on a burst so it has a 5.75 second cooldown the tempest is really good if you have multiple of them all with their own phase lances what they do is they'll overload a target using their sabos. And then say you have three phase lances, or say you have three tempests, each with two phase lances, you're going to do 7,500 damage to an overloaded target. That's going to kill, if not um, remove like half of the, <laughs> the hull of most things in the game. Um, just from three tempests working together. So this is another excellent CQC ship. Uh, higher top speed, good flux management. And then a very, very, very powerful weapon system. So those are the DPS ships. Um, next up, we're going to talk about the tanking ships. So here we have monitors. These are like traditional tanks. Um, and then you have the Shade and the Tempest. So we already covered the Shade. The Tempest is very similar in that it's designed with just a bunch of hull mods to be as fast and tanky as possible. Um, similar to how the shade was designed if you've seen the phase guide uh, But we can go over detail of that in a second Going to the monitor The monitor is a very underrated ship. Not a lot of people are using this ship um, They really undervalue it The monitor is phenomenal at tying up capital ships. So if we deploy something like two um, onslaughts here and we go ahead and pilot ourselves, or you can tell the AI to pilot. What it will do is, it can sit in front of a capital ship, and it's maneuverable enough that it can pull to the side here. And now you have two onslaughts that are fully invested in killing this ship. And they never will. And I'll go ahead and demonstrate why they can't do it. So all he can do is hit me with uh, annihilator rockets, and if we put this on auto fire, if we put this on autopilot, he'll continue to do his thing. He'll move out of range, and we just eat those thermal cannons. It doesn't affect us at all. He'll vent, and now we have two capital ships chasing down this one frigate that they'll never be able to kill. We just mitigate so much damage that it. It's never a problem. 
and it's maneuverable that it can pull um, in front or behind of a capital ship and just basically tie them up, tie them up on themselves. So how is it designed? How did I come to this design? Well, the monitor has a special ability called Flux Shunt. It's very unique. Very few ships have it. What it does is it allows you to dissipate hard flux while your shields are up. Whereas normally you have to drop your shields in order to dissipate your hard flux. Building on this ship, I wanted things that lowered its uh, flux cost per second and then increased its shield effectiveness. So things that do that are hardened shields, which increases your shield effectiveness by 15%. So if we look at our shield flux per damage, it goes down. The lower the value, the better. So with hardened shields, we're getting down to 0.61. Next up, we have our resistant flux conduits. So what this does is it allows us to vent. So if we do um, take a lot of uh, hard flux damage and we do need to get out of there, we can get out of there, vent, and then quickly get back into the fight. Then we have unstable injector, which just gives us a little top speed. The monitor is not the fastest frigate, so the unstable injectors helps there. And then finally, we have shield conversion in front. So what this is going to do is it's going to cut our uh, shield flux cost in half. So it's going to lower our overall shield flux that we generate. Cool. You can also do stabilized shields. Um, the reason why I went with shield conversion front over stabilized shield is that it increases our arc to 360, so now we're covered from every angle. Right. And then with the monitor, you really want more vents than capacity. Um, the reason you want a little capacity is in case you're tanking something like a, um, something with EMP weapons that can jump over shields based on how much flux uh, capacity, how much hard flux you have, you want like a little more capacity to play with. So something like that, but also this is viable. This ship is designed to tank a Paragon specifically, and it has a little um, more, it has more elements interacting inside of it. So here we have solar shielding. What it's going to do is it's going to reduce the energy damage taken by 20%. Um, here we have hardened shields, which again lowers our flux damage per second. And then we have safety overrides, which we talked about previously. It increases our vent efficiency. So the way I designed this ship is I had the Paragon in mind. The Paragon does energy damage. So I want to tailor a ship that specifically counters the enemy Paragon. It's also effective against other ships in the game. I won't mention them here, but you know exactly what I'm talking about. If you know, you know. Um, but I designed this ship with those ships in mind. Um, so that's how I came up with this design. And we can go ahead and demonstrate it. The ship can sit in front of a Paragon all day long, and it won't take any damage. Not to it, its shields will take damage. But what we can do is we can set it on autopilot here and the monitor will tie up this paragon entirely this paragon can't do anything essentially um, because it has a frigate so close to it the AI freaks out and it's like I need to deal with this now so as you see we're hanging out behind it um, it's shooting us with both tachyon lances all of its lasers and our flux is being mitigated because of our vent efficiency. And we're doing a very insignificant amount of damage to it in the form of our flux, our flat cannons. We can't do anything about that. I wish you could remove the flat cannons, but they're built in and they're set to auto fire. So, um, The reason you would use a monitor in a situation like this is that while the Paragon is busy trying to kill the monitor, the rest of your fleet will move in and go ahead and deal damage to the Paragon. Um, but that's how I designed those ships. That's what I have in mind. This is generic everyday um, use. I just want to make sure that its flux per damage is really low and then it has a lot of vents. So I use hull mods to um, improve upon it. And then this has energy ships in mind. Next up, we have the shade, which I'll briefly cover since I covered it before. But essentially, it has a very high top speed 
and it is made tanky via things like reinforced bulkheads, insulated engine assembly, heavy armor. These all give it um, a phenomenal resistance to missiles, to energy weapons, right? It can take a couple hits and still be fine. And then also, um, the Tempest is de designed similarly to the Shade, um, in that it relies more so on its top speed, since it doesn't have any cloaking to um, hold a, a target's attention and then quickly get out of battle, dump its flux, and then get back in. Um, it usually doesn't get hit because its profile is extremely narrow and it's a small target, but if it does get hit, it can at least survive and then um, keep engaging on the target. Also, its drones provide point defense, which is fantastic for it. It's not susceptible to a lot of missile spam that other frigates are. So that's how I design tanks. Um, finally, we're going to cover the support ships. So we have the Omen here, which is the point defense Overwatch King. It is invaluable. It is so good. Um, it protects your DPSers from being counterattacked with missile spam. Um, and it disables enemy weapon systems. It is so good. I strongly recommend uh, you use Omen to your fleet, even if you're not going to use them as CQC. Just having them sitting next to your capitals is going to provide a quality of life that you can't get with many other ships. And then finally we have the Vigilance. It's another support ship. It provides support in the form of additional firepower. So you would pair it alongside your DPS ships. Um, it can provide things like additional Sabos, uh, the Harpoon MRM, the Annihilator rockets, things like that. Uh, Typhoon Reaper launcher to just give your ships that extra punch that they need. Um, let's go over the Omen. It's designed with point defense in mind, so it exaggerates things that um, deal with point defense. So it has two PD lasers, and then the Salamander is just for incidental, um, like destroying enemies' engines, right? It, it, that's not the purpose of the P, of the uh, Omen, but that's just an additional feature that it has. Um, its flux dissipation is already good. Uh, its weapon flux per second is only 80, so it already exceeds it. And it has a really, really, really good shield flux per damage. Um, so you really want like a large capacity. Um, you really want to just make sure that you can absorb as much damage as possible on this thing. The reason we have vents here is in case uh, we need to dump a lot of flux, we can do it quickly. Next up, it has hardened shields, resistant flux conduits, all of which we covered. Shield conversion in front. For the reduction in flux cost per second and a solar shielding to reduce energy damage taken and that's the ship that's how we design it um, mostly leaning on the hull mods and then providing with a little pd finally we have the vigilance uh, dead simple to build safety overrides expanded missile racks and then a sabo um, this provides 24 missiles uh, an additional 24 sabos to the fight well 24 bursts, two bursts in, er, 24 <laughs> Savo missiles, sorry, 24 Savo missiles, two in each burst, so 48 additional Savo missiles total to a fight. That's per Vigilance, you can have as many Vigilance as you want, their deployment cost is only four, so in theory, you could field 60 of these and have 60 Vigilances each with their own Sabo, bringing an insane amount of missiles to a fight. Um, but that's that. So those are all the CQC ships. That's how I design them. That's my guide and philosophy behind them. For DPS ships, you want to make sure that your flux dissipation matches your weapon flux per second. Um, then you want to make sure that, you, well, you want to make sure that you're doing the most damage possible. Then you want to make sure that these match then you want to see how you can improve your ship with hull mods. And then finally, you want to test it just to make sure you can win in a one-on-one -on -one fight. Obviously, your ship would perform better in combat because it wouldn't be by itself. You would have multiple of these flying together. But that's a guide on CQC ships. I hope that was helpful. Um, I hope that uh, this illuminates kind of like the, the way you should be designing ships. Or one of the ways you can design ships, this game is very customizable um, in the way that you can set up your ship, set up your fleet. 
But that's it. That's the guide. I uh, hope it was helpful. Other than that, grumpy out.